There are plenty of question marks that surround the Cincinnati Reds, even in the midst of this lockout. Today, we're going to begin to dive into those questions by starting with Luis Castillo. We'll also look at his best performance from this past year and bask in the glow that is La Piedra. That's coming up on today's Locked On Reds podcast. Let's get started. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Reds your hashtag first listen of the day. We're free and available on all platforms today. I want to talk about Luis Castillo. We're going to start a series where we look at some questions, maybe some too early questions, maybe just right timing questions, whatever questions that we will set up for whenever spring training starts and whenever the season gets going, things that we can follow along with. And the first one I want to get to is Luis Castillo. What is it? that is holding him back? What is keeping him from that Cy Young level performance that we all know that he is capable of? Dude's got so much talent. We're going to talk about that. Going to look at some way too early projections for his 2022 season and look back on the best performance of 2021 and really the performance that signaled La Piedra was back and was going to be the dude that we all expected him to be. But let's start with this. Can Luis Castillo find consistency? That's really what's holding him back because he's got to dominate all season long. Amongst Reds fans, we think of Luis Castillo as a Cy Young candidate. We think of him as one of the best pitchers in baseball. That's He's, he's looked at as a good pitcher outside of Red's country. He's not really looked at as a top flight dude though. And it's, it's worth uh, repeating. We, we talked about this a lot during the season, the splits that were the first two months compared to the rest of the year during April and May, Luis Castillo made 11 starts. He pitched 52 in a third innings. So, you know, if you're keeping track at home, just under five innings per start during those first two months, He had an ERA of 7.2 in 11 starts. So that's a small sample size, but not a teeny tiny one, at least a little bit uh, worth of thinking about like, hmm, not great. Not the numbers you want to see, especially from Luis Castillo. He allowed 70 hits. Something that was interesting about that, he, it seemed as though he was cutting back on the walks. He did only have a 9.2% walk rate, which is still a little bit above league average, but not to the point that you're losing sleep over the walk rate. He just had a crazy unlucky BABIP. His BABIP was 371, which helped feed a batting average against him of 314. Hitters weren't scared of him. A lot of that had to do with mechanical stuff. You know, Cowboy and Chris Welsh were constantly talking about how he would fly open in his mechanics. And I don't even know why I just tried to imitate mechanics. I'm not a pitcher. But they talked about how whenever he would come around, it seemed like his arm was just trailing and and just kind of flying along. So his command suffered. And that was something that you saw quite a bit. Two things that really stood out to me, low strikeout percentage, and that was something that everybody harped on, but he only had a 19.3% strikeout percentage. For his career, he's over 26%. That's not good. That's a huge dip for those first two months and a big reason why he was unsuccessful. Also, something that he kind of really can't control, but something that affected him greatly the percentage of runners that he left on base while he was pitching was 54%. That meant that if a runner got on base, almost half the time they were scoring. That is crazy. But that's what fed that high ERA. And then the month of June came. For the rest of the season, 22 starts, 2.73 ERA, and 135 and a third innings pitched, and a nice little 26% strikeout rate. It's a career average, you know, nothing crazy. Didn't go crazy high on that. Kept the walk rate 
where it was before, but the big change was his BABIP normalized. Usually it's about 295. He had a BABIP of 292, which cut opposing hitters batting average by almost 100 points. It went from 314 to 223. Some good stuff right there. Plus, he was leaving runners on base at an 81% clip as opposed to 54%. There's your huge difference, and that is why we saw the Luis Castillo that we all know and love, the guy that we expect to see, La Piedra, the guy who can anchor this rotation. His talent is undeniable. We understand what we're getting from this guy. If you look at the Reds' rotation and you say, boy, Tyler Malley's really talented, Sonny Gray's really talented, everybody looks at Luis Castillo. It starts with him. It has to start with him. It's very obvious. That changeup, baby, that's butter. That's amazing. And you're talking about a slider that really sort of seemed to improve as the year went along. A pitch that I think we need to see more of next year. And, of course, his four-seamer touching 100, 101 miles an hour. And he had some decent command with it. It was just that sinker, man. That sinker is a killer. And I get it. He has it in his repertoire to kind of pitch to contact and, and get that ground ball, try and get those double plays. He was just getting killed. I mean, that thing was getting clobbered all year long. It it really, it was just the month of June that he was good. But like those first two months, April and May, the batting average against his sinking fastball was over 500. Over half the time he threw it, he was giving up a hit. Not a ground ball that was getting outs, hits. And the slugging percentage against it was terrible. So, I don't know if that's something he needs to tweak or, or you know, maybe use the slider as more of a ground out pitch. That's I'm, I'm not an expert in pitching, but just kind of looking at the numbers and looking at the way that everything broke down, that sinker was really what killed him. And in the early part, you know, we talked about Cowboy and Chris Welsh really talked about his mechanics and how he was flying open a lot in his delivery. Part of that also, it led his slink, his sinker to be like right down the middle. It always felt like, and sometimes his four seamer was stuck over the middle as well. And guys were clobbering it or they were way outside. It was not to the point that he was able to paint the corners with his fastball and really set up his changeup. So he had to rely on his changeup to be that swing and miss pitch, but hitters could lay off that too. So they basically baited him until he had to throw a strike, and then he was just getting killed. You saw lots and lots of hits. It wasn't like he was walking people, and he didn't give up home runs at a higher rate than normal. I mean, he did give up eight home runs in the first two months, and he had 19 home runs total for the season. So, you know, make that what you will. But overall, he just gave up so much hard contact in those first two months, and it kind of torpedoed his season. It's something that when you look at 2022, he's got to start hot. He's got to stay hot in the middle, and he's got to end hot because it seemed like he really took too long to get ramped up. I know a lot of it, you know, we, we were coming up with stats talking about, well, it's cold. He doesn't pitch well when it's cold. I don't know. That's not really something that you want to talk about. If you're talking about a Cy Young pitcher, you're not making excuses for him. We got to stop making excuses for Luis Castillo in 2022. And the way that we do that is that he just pitches well all the way through, dominates all season long. That's what we're looking for when we're talking about Luis Castillo. All right, coming up, some way too early projections based on Fangraph's steamer model. It's like, I I believe that's their uh, computer model uh, for his 2022 season. And we'll look back at his best performance from this past year. But first, let's talk some fantasy baseball. It's never too early to start thinking about fantasy baseball, Reds fans. And I want to introduce you to the best fantasy baseball platform in the industry, Fantrax. Fantrax is the most customizable fantasy baseball platform around. It offers the best experience, whether you're talking about a redraft league, dynasty, keeper, or even best ball leagues. Even if you already have a league on another site, you can import those settings to fan tracks and then use their multiple levels of customization to take your league to the level that you've always dreamed of. Among the most trusted names in fantasy sports since 2008, 
Fantrax invites you to sign up for free today. If you do, you'll be entered to win an official signed Fernando Tatis Jr. Baseball. Simply go to Fantrax.com slash locked on and use the promo code Tatis at checkout. That's T-A-T-I-S. Don't wait. Get your fantasy league to the level of competition that you've always wanted at Fantrax.com slash locked on with the promo code Tatis. Fantrax, it's the home of fantasy sports. Play ball. And stop me if you've heard this before. You've got your device to watch the live game, the game live. You've got uh, television, your favorite uh, live shows on this one app. You're watching sports highlights on your phone. And you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for all the good stuff. Stop it. Stop all this nonsense when it comes to finding your favorite television shows and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can go to DirecTV.com today and learn about all the different entertainment packages that DirecTV Stream has to offer. They can give you your live sports, your favorite TV shows, your favorite movies, reality TV, news, all that great stuff is at DirecTV Stream, and you can find out more at DirecTV.com. So stop it with all the multiple devices, and stop with the hundreds of logins that you have to worry about for your different profiles. Get it all together with DirecTV Stream at DirecTV.com. Compatible devices required, and the contents vary by package. Thanks again for making Locked On Reds your hashtag first listen of the day. We're free and available wherever you You get your podcast tomorrow. We'll continue this series looking at questions about the Reds as we head into 2022. And we'll look at Joey Votto and ask, can he replicate 2021? That's coming up tomorrow. Let's continue talking about Luis Castillo. I looked at Fangrass. They have his way too early projections when it comes to 2022. And it's way too early for the simple fact that, well, the lockout and the offseason isn't anywhere near done. So let's take a look at what these have to say because they're looking for a slight improvement. They, they're expecting a slight improvement based on the Fangraphs steamer model, which I think is just their computer model, which a lot of that has a bias toward past performances. So they're going to base his years and his kind of average numbers and then look at what his health status is and things like that. And they're not going to be too overly dramatic in one area. But the nice thing is pretty much everything they're expecting an improvement in. Because, you know, what if I told you that when it came to 2022 and Luis Castillo, he was going to throw the most innings of his career and his ERA from last year is going to be better in 2022. You'd take that, right? I know I would. Luis Castillo improving, I think that's good. The thing of it is, though, the numbers that they're giving us, even though they are improvements in every area, I'm talking about a higher strikeout percentage than last year, a lower walk percentage than last year, a lower ERA than last year, a lower XFIP. So they're thinking that even his predictors are going to be better, but that's still not Cy Young level because the computer knows Based on his past performances, there's going to be a period of time where Luis Castillo kind of disappears. There's going to be this period of time where the Reds are calling on him every fifth day. And he goes out and he throws like four innings and allows like five earned runs and a bunch of hits, a bunch of walks, you know, things like that. He's got to get rid of this. And we talked about this in the first segment. He's got to start hot, stay hot, and end hot throughout the season. The base major league baseball season is a marathon. We, that's the cliche that everybody uses, but it's true. 162 games. You're talking about 34, 35, 36 starts, depending on how healthy a pitcher is. Usually they go through a period where they have to skip a start or two, but for the most part, you're talking about over 33, 34 starts throughout a season. So when you have a run of like 10 really good starts, guess what, Bubbo? That's only a third of the year. And in some cases, less than a third of the year. So he's got to be consistent all the way throughout. And we got to stop talking about the weather. I'm, you know, I'm making that promise to you next year. I know it's something that I talked about this past year with Luis Castillo and it's a narrative, but I hate it. And after I talked about it for a certain amount of time, 
which felt like too long during those first two months, I, I, I just thought about it. I'm like, can, can we stop it? Can we stop making excuses for it? Well, the temperature was below 50 degrees and it was a little bit more overcast than Luis Castillo would have liked. So he didn't pitch very well. I'm sure he doesn't like that. I'm sure he is not. He's definitely not on board with the idea of, well, it's cold, so I'm just not going to pitch well. He wants to pitch well no matter what the weather is. So we're going to stop it with the whole, hey, bad weather, bad Castillo talk. That's just whatever. I promise you, Locked on Reds this upcoming year with the changes that are coming, one of those changes will be, I'm not going to talk about bad weather, bad Castillo. So, again, the steamer projections, they're talking about 192 innings pitched, which is the most, it would be the most of his career. He's never been over 200 innings. And, in fact, last year, kind of looking through his performances and trying to ascertain which one was the best, believe it or not, the most amount of innings he pitched in any one game was seven. He never pitched seven and a third, seven and two thirds, or, you know, getting into the eighth inning or something. I'm not saying he needs to do that consistently, but your Cy, your Cy Young level guys flirt with complete games on a regular basis. That's never something that we are expecting with him. And maybe that's really where he takes his game to the next level. But when I look at Luis Castillo in 2022, we were happy whenever he got his ERA, ERA below four this past year, simply because those first two months after May, his ERA was 7.2. You're looking at that and you're saying, boy, you got to do a lot of work to get down below four. But if you're a Cy Young level pitcher, which I believe that Luis Castillo can be, and I'm pretty sure you agree with me on that one. I'd be surprised if you didn't. Then you're looking at an ERA that's closer to three and not just happy that it's below four. Not a guy that we're thinking, well, you know, the strikeout percentage and the, the X FIP and things like that. There's no excuses. So. That is what I'm looking for, and I don't think it's a bold prediction to say that I think that the 3.78 ERA that the steamer model has projected for him is a little high. I think it's going to be like 3.3, three, maybe. That's where I'm thinking Luis Castillo's ERA is going to be next year. But I like the fact that the computers are thinking there's going to be a marginal improvement. It's just he has to get rid of those you almost call them dead periods where he has multiple starts of just meh, baseball. That's got to happen. All right, coming up, let's talk about that best performance of 2021 for Luis Castillo. Before we do that, though, I want to bring some comfort into your life. Oh, look, if you're like me, you probably don't put that much thought, or at least you didn't used to, into socks and underwear. So when someone tells you that Stance is the most comfortable pair of socks or underwear that you have that you will ever wear, you probably think, yeah, sure, whatever. And then continue to figure out if you're going to put money on Luis Castillo to win the Cy Young Award in 2022. But I'm telling you, you're going to want to try Stance. Founded in 2009, Stance Apparel represents a radical reinvention of socks, underwear, and active apparel with a sharp focus on comfort, quality and creativity stance brings an atypical aesthetic alongside some of pop culture's hottest collaborators for the ultimate in style and self-expression because everything you wear should be an extension of who you are and how you feel. They have an amazing selection of major league baseball products as well. When you're talking about socks, underwear, and active apparel that you've got to check out stance believes that the perfect fit matters more than fitting in that those who feel good do good. Go see for yourself, register for an account at stance.com and get 15% off your first purchase by using the promo code locked on that's locked on for 15% off your first purchase at stance. Com. Enjoy the color and comfort of a life less ordinary with Stance. All right, the best performance that Luis Castillo offered, which is interesting because there was a performance that he had, I believe it was his second, yeah, his second appearance, his second start of the year in April was actually in the runnings. And I'm, I'm basing this a lot of, 
a, a lot of off uh, Bill James game score. In case you're unfamiliar with the game score, it's a metric that tries to compile a number grade for a pitcher's entire performance during a given game. And according to game score, June 15th in Milwaukee was Luis Castillo's best game. In fact, you can really look at that as the point where we all understood that Luis Castillo was back. You probably remember there were multiple times during the month of April and May that I was trying to kind of stretch something about his performance that day that meant that he was back. Well, he had more strikeouts today. Well, he didn't walk anybody today, but he was still giving up runs. He was still giving up hits. He still wasn't helping the Reds win during those first two months. Then in June, it all changed. He pitched pitched seven shutout innings in Milwaukee, and he got a no decision for his efforts, but it was his best performance individually. Couldn't help it that nobody was helping him with the bat. Striking out seven and allowing six base runners total, three walks and three hits, he kept the scoreboard clean, even though the Reds didn't help him. because And, and this was a weird thing because you're thinking, well, it's Milwaukee. He was probably facing Corbin Burns. No. Oh, no, oh, Brandon Woodruff. No. Oh, Freddie Peralta. He had a really good year, all-star year. He was pitching super well in that first half. No. It was Brett Anderson. Brett Anderson shut out the Reds during that time. And it was annoying to see because, and, and shout out to Scott Heineman. This was one of his handfuls of starts where David Bell thought that the righty lefty thing would work out to their advantage. It didn't. He went over two with two strikeouts that day, but they just couldn't get anything going against him. And it took until the 10th inning before anybody scored because Castillo kept the scoreboard clean. And then for two innings, the bullpen helped out, but then the 10th inning came along. And there was lots of fireworks, lots of hits. No. The ghost runner was Nick Castellanos on second. There was a walk, there was a hit by pitch, and the bases were loaded. And then a hit by pitch brought in Castellanos. And then Kyle Farmer gave the Reds a 2 nothing lead with a sacrifice fly. Yeah. Kind of headline-grabbing hits and wonderful lineup work that you all come to know and love from the Cincinnati Reds. Not so much. Then in the bottom of the 10th inning, you had Heath Hembry on to get the save, and he got two quick strikeouts with the guy standing on second, and then a single from Willie Adamas. Ugh, whatever. Willie Adamas, that's a thing. Like When I think about last year, I th I'm, I'm always going to count that, and I don't know how involved. I know that there were reports that the Reds were involved in talks with the Rays to bring Willie Adamas to Cincinnati, but I'm always going to count that as a missed opportunity for the Reds. Something that could have made 2021 the playoff season that we all expected. The Reds could have got Willie Adamas. Instead, Milwaukee got him for a couple of relievers, which don't get me wrong, the relievers were good. Drew Rasmussen and uh, JP Fireson, but yeah, whatever. So the good news was the Reds still won that game though. And when you look back on that performance, his last inning of the night was the most stressful inning. The seventh, he actually uh, had to face the bases loaded before he finally got Jackie Bradley Jr. to strike out. But before then, he only ever had one base runner on the pat on the base paths at any given moment during the rest of the game. And there were a lot of one, two, three innings. He pitched very well very efficient, and kept the scoreboard clean. That was his best performance. But again, something that I'm looking for in 2022, he doesn't have to do it on a regular basis, but I want to see a start where he goes eight innings. He's done that in the past. I think he can do it again. He's got the talent. He just has to be a little bit more efficient. Maybe tweak that sinking fastball pitch a little bit, regrip it or something, I don't know, or get rid of it altogether and focus on your slider on Castillo slider as the kind of ground ball, get a guy out, get a double play pitch and focus on the fastball and the change up for the strikeouts. Cause I think he can do that. And I, I, I don't think a Cy Young, I mean, I put money on him this past year in the preseason to win the Cy Young. Of course that was blown up very quickly, but I think he can do it. 
I think I'm going to do it again this next year. I'm going to put some money. And this is not just like a, a heart bet. He is a good pitcher. And so long as he's still a Cincinnati Red, he could be the next Cincinnati Red Cy Young pitcher. And I think he could do it next year. He's got that ability. We'll we'll keep talking about that as the offseason goes along. And like I said, tomorrow we're going to talk about Joey Votto. And can he replicate 2021? I might give you a little bit of spoiler because I don't think I'm going to say no but we're going to flesh out why we're going to, we're going to talk about that on tomorrow's lockdown reds podcast. That's going to do it for us here today. Thank you again for making lockdown reds your hashtag first listen. Now make your second listen locked on bets as your boy Q and Lee Sterling help you make some money at betonline.ag. That's locked on bets, just like locked on reds free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, it might be a lockout and it might be the off season, but we are locked on reds. Every single day.